If you've ever wanted to get into a fixed pedal building, this is by far the best way because it is the step before buying a kit or buying some sort of beginner project. There are loads of great beginner projects out there, but you do have to buy a soldering iron. You might have to buy a breadboard. You might have to learn how to solder. You might have never done that before. You might have to buy wire and all sorts of other bits and pieces. This is just the quickest, easiest, simplest and cheapest way to get into doing it. Plus it's loads of fun because of how fast it is and how quickly you can put fixed pedals together and just have a blast jamming on them. This entire project today is going to be done by just simply twisting components together and using alligator clips. And this is something that I use often when designing because it's just insanely fun and I can just quickly get ideas out of my head and just make them and listen to them really quickly to see if it's going to be something I'm going to use. I'm definitely planning on doing more of these sort of projects but today what we're going to do is build something called the Fragment Booster. Now the Fragment Booster is a cool little class A booster that I designed years ago. Now I say design but there's no doubt that this has been done before pretty much almost everything has been done before but at the time it was something I put together that I used as part of larger circuits it was a circuit fragment but it sounded so good by itself I called it the fragment boost and I used to sell those years and years ago um, probably like well, almost 20 years ago so what I want to do is show you what it kind of sounds like so here's my clean sound anyway <music> Right, now let's get it going. So now this is with it engaged. So as you can hear, it's a pretty awesome sounding boost. It stands up there with anything else out there on the market. And when I build stuff, I like to build stuff that sounds good. There's no point in just making another novelty style effects pedal project that's just quick to put together, but doesn't sound great. And it's not something you're gonna use on your board. So anyway, let's get into the build. Right, so let's crack into the parts needed for today's project. Now, first of all, if you like this sort of stuff, please smash me a like and subscribe as well if you can. It really helps these videos get out to more people. I've got more of these projects on the way. I really like doing this sort of thing. It's really cool. So first, we have got a 100K audio taper pot. Now, you can use a linear taper pot if you like to. Um, I just really like how the taper on an audio taper feels with this particular circuit. Next is a little JFET, so I'm using a J201. Now you can use a 2N5458 or a 2N5457, just make sure you check the pin out, they'll also work. I've just got loads and loads of J201s from uh, the pedals that I build, the McPherson Stompbox stuff. Next we have a 3.9K resistor, this is the drain resistor for this circuit. Now depending on your JFET that you use you might have to change this like anywhere from sort of a 2.2k up to a 10k should be fine you can just try random values inside a circuit I would definitely be using a trim I always put trimmers into circuits I build so I can sort of tweak it perfectly to how I like it to be next is a 1k resistor that's the input one next we have a 10 nanofarad capacitor that's going to be our output capacitor for this circuit what else we got? Oh, yep, a couple of jacks. Input and output jack. Obviously, I'm going to be using my effects deck here. I've got jacks and uh, pots sort of built into it, so it just makes it a lot easier and cleaner when I'm filming. Next, we've got a battery snap and, a, of course, a battery. And lastly, the good old, just a whole bunch of alligator clips. They are one of the most handiest things I have in the workshop. I use them for so many different jobs, not just to hook up electrical circuits. And lastly is one of these bolts here. Now this is just a normal sort of steel bolt. We're gonna use this as a ground connection. On my effects deck, I'm gonna be able to use this um, steel rail at the back here but a bolt is a really good place to connect all your grounds because it just makes it so much easier to have one central place where all your ground connections go Right, so what we're gonna do now is prepare the parts before we start clipping everything together. Now this just cuts back on the amount of alligator clips you need and it just makes the whole thing a lot tidier. Before we do that though, I'll just let you know that we do have a schematic available 
on my fourth wall site. It's a couple of bucks and it, you don't need the schematic for this project. You can just follow along, but it's if you like working from a schematic like me, or if you just want to help support the channel, I also have added a whole bunch of um, mods and things in there as well. So you can play around with a few different ideas. For the members in the plus tier, I've added a whole bunch of extra tips and I've also explained those mods too that are on those schematics. So you can check that out if you are a member there. But anyway, first grab your JFET to start with. So this is, let me come back get a focus on this one this is the j201 now the pins on this one are drain source and gate now you need to know which pins are which for this to work you can't just hook stuff up to any old random pin but what i like to do is i like to bend these out to start these two out like this kind of making this sort of arrangement this makes it a heck of a lot easier to bend things together so let's just take our for starters let's take our gate here we are going to um twist that 1k resistor to it yeah beautiful looks like that and then next we've got on the other side we're going to have the 3.9k so let's just do the same thing pretty much look like this now from where this resistor and this leg joins we need to twist on our 10 nanofarad output capacitor and there we go so it should look something kind of like that sort of monstrosity there and that's um that's the uh basic uh, engine of the circuit. Next we are going to hook up all the alligator clips and all those connections show you exactly where they all go. All right, first you've got your input jack now you can see one of these lugs is sitting out here and one of them is connected to this center ring that's going to be our ground lug there. This one here going to clip one of these on and the other end of this is going to go to the input resistor you have to make sure that you clip it on this side of the resistor. If you clip it down here, you're technically well, you're connected directly to that transistor. So you have to be going through the resistor into the transistor. So that's our first connection. The next connection, we're going from the 3.9K resistor leg. And that is going to be connecting to red wire of our battery snap. So here's our battery snap here that's connecting to the red wire of that. Next, we've got the center leg. This is the source leg on our transistor on the JFET. It's going to connect from that and the other end of that is going to go directly to our good old grounding bolt. You can just connect anywhere onto there. Easy. Next we have this side of our output capacitor. Connect one onto there. From that output capacitor we're going to go straight to this lug on the back of the pot. And then we're going to get another alligator clip. That's going to go to the center lug on the pot. And the other end of that is going to go onto the output lug of the jack the hot lug which is the one connected to this tip here we're going to do a whole bunch of grounds now so from the ground lug on the jack connects to our ground bolt easy okay same with on the pot there that other lug that we didn't connect before this outer lug here that also goes to the ground bolt again connected onto there right from the ground lug of the input jack same deal across to the ground bolt again lots of ground connections here and then we've got one more we've got from the battery snap so that's from the ground or black wire from the battery snap and that also goes to the ground bolt and that's it that's everything wired up so you just got to make sure you know what your input jack is which one your output jack is make sure you plug your guitar into the input jack the one that's going into the jfet through that 1k resistor then the output jack is the one coming from the pot right so this is how i do the initial startup when i'm testing a brand new circuit like this now bear in mind i haven't included any polarity protection or power supply filtering we are using a battery so it pretty much means you don't really need power supply filtering but the polarity protection is really handy if you are going to build it into a pedal definitely install some sort of diode protection um, it will save your pedal or your power supply even um, so what i do is i get it ready you just got to absolutely make sure you have got the battery snap going onto the battery the exact right way around you do not want to get that wrong now you have your guitar everything hooked up my amps on i strum my guitar and then i briefly i'm going to touch this to the battery and off and that's that's all i want to hear i could hear straight away it's working i could probably put it on now make sure the controls work 
Cool. Let's have a quick jam. So this is on about half now. And as you can see, it's pretty, it's pretty nice. It kind of adds a nice little bit of topping to the sound. And it really helps push that amp into a little bit more overdrive. Now if I crank it, so now I'm on about three quarters. It kind of starts unleashing itself. I really like it around about that three quarter mark and just remember I'm using an audio taper pot so if you're using a linear taper that volume's going to come in a lot earlier. A lot of the reason why this feels so nice is because of that input resistor, that 1k input resistor was the big difference between it sort of feeling a little bit sort of flubby and really getting that compression dialed in just right because it stops your guitar signal hitting that front end really hard. There's obviously loads you could do with this circuit and I have included some really cool mods with the schematic on our fourth wall page and I will be putting a few extra bits and pieces up for our members over there as well. Please put something down in the comments if you build this. I really hope some of you guys get inspired by this and actually start building your own effects pedals because that's pretty much where it started for me. I mean, I think my first pedal was just like a ball of wires and a few pots and it was just like magic to me when it started working. So anyway, I hope you guys have a great week and we'll catch you in the next video.